Hello, Internet. Craig Chamberlain with CraigTheTechTeacher.com here. Uh, today I'm going to be going over Gmail. Because let's face it, many people just simply do not know how to use it or leverage it properly. So I decided that I'm going to just compress into a little video pretty much everything you need to know about Gmail. Now remember, this video was inspired by one of my patrons, and I need more patrons. The patrons help support the show. Uh, they donate as little as $2 a month to help me help make sure that my content keeps getting put out there. Now, this video is going to be for my coworkers as well as you guys on the internet. Uh, and the patrons make that possible. This particular patron was Ron Hahn. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now, you can see on my screen, hopefully, I'm looking at uh, Gmail. And uh, there's 13 tips that I want to go through for organizing your Gmail. Now, the first tip is centralizing all of your email to the Gmail service. Uh, it's one thing I highly recommend you do, and it allows you to make sure all of your emails going to the same inbox. In order to do that, you're going to go to Settings. So click the cog in the top right-hand corner and click Settings. And then you're going to want to go to Accounts and Import. And then here you have a Send Mail As section, but then down here you also have a Check Mail from other accounts using POP3. Now you can add all of your emails right here onto this checklist and click Add a POP3 Mail Account to, of your own. And then this will actually allow you to add all of your email addresses so that all of your email can come in through this. Now typically you just have to enter your email address, click Next Step, and it'll walk you through a couple of smaller steps. Maybe send a verification email to the other email. Uh, and then pretty much, as long as you got the username and password, the email and password, it'll start collecting all of your emails right within your Gmail inbox. Now I prefer this method because if you set it up as an inbox based email, all of your email comes into D Gmail directly rather than you having to forward your emails from another service. And uh, to me, I like that because then it allows you to set them up as a send from email and you can actually send out email from that email address as well. So this is called what I call the, the organizational tip here is centralizing all of your email right into your Gmail service. Now, once you've centralized your email, we're going to go back to our inbox here. We're going to look at something called tabs. Now, the tabs are up here at the top. They have these uh, few fancy little primary, social, promotion, and updates. These tabs are essentially a way for Google to automatically organize the way that your information comes into your inbox. I recommend leveraging these tabs to the best of your ability. And every time you get something in your email, let's say it's in the wrong tab. Well, switching tabs is very easy to do on many systems. So if I go to social, for example, and Ron Han pings me on social, and I say, wait a minute, this isn't a social media post. I'll drag it over here to primary. And then Google pops up and says, it's been moved to primary, but should I do this for future messages from do reply? And then if I click yes here, it's gonna automatically reorganize those messages. What's gonna happen is over time, Google's gonna learn what I consider to be social media, what I consider to be my primary inbox mail, what I consider to be promotional mail, and what I consider to be updates. Typically updates are like um, if you're on newsletters or if you're receiving bills or things like that. Promotions are advertisements and deals, maybe coupon codes. Social is for social media sites, Twitter, Google+, uh, whatever else you might use. Primary, of course, would be just your normal inbox. And so that's really kind of a great way to leverage these tabs. If you click plus in the top right hand corner, it does let you enable other tabs if they're not available right now. Uh, primary is enabled by default. You can also disable all these if you do not want anything to go into any of the other tabs. Uh, forums are for people who like to use web forums. So that's basically how you would use tabs. Now let's talk about labels because labels are different than tabs. Tabs are across the top, your labels are across the left hand corner. These labels help you further organize the way your information is displayed. You'll notice that I have a label here on this page called Precision Electric Ink. This label is basically automatically applied when I receive emails from people inside of the company. And setting up these labels can be done a few ways. You can basically go into the settings, click the cog in the top right hand corner and click settings and then go into labels. And labels will let you display what shows up, what doesn't show up. It'll also let you display and uh, add new labels at any given time. Now for me, I hide most of my labels by default, but you can actually have it show start, important, show chat, show sent mail, hide sent mail, and you'll notice on the left-hand side it is updating it as I'm clicking them. And so I can go through here and manually show what shows up on my uh, left-hand sidebar. Now notice I can also decide whether or not I'm gonna show my uh, categories here as well on the left-hand side. 
So if I don't want the categories to show up, I can just hide them here and then it'll remove them from the left-hand side because I've already got them at the top. So you have the option to do that. Now, if you're also big on Google+, it does give you the option to show or hide your circles if you wanna view certain circles uh, and what's going on as far as their messages and concern and notifications right within your Google+. Now, if we scroll all the way at the bottom, then we look at the label section. You can create new labels at any given time right here. And as you can see, I have a couple labels here, Patrons, Personal, Precision Electric Ink, and Tech Teacher. I recommend not getting too specific with these labels. I recommend maybe having three or four because an email should only fall within one label. You should never have multiple labels for an email because it'll become an organizational nightmare. Uh, so I basically have these four little categories. So you're like, well, that's great, Craig. Now that I've got my labels set up, how do I get my emails to go into the labels? Well, that segues us into the fourth tip, which is filters. Now, if I go to my inbox, I can set up what I like to call filters. There's a number of ways to do them. My favorite way to do them is as emails come in. So let's say I receive an email from Debbie, right? And this is a tech teacher related email. And I'm like, okay, I want all of these emails that I get from Debbie now to automatically be labeled tech teacher. Now, anytime I receive an email that I want filtered or all future emails like it filtered, I can click the arrow on the right hand side and I can click filter messages like this. And what it'll do is it'll automatically generate an email uh, with the information that it's looking for. Now this says filter from Craig Chamberlain, Craig the tech teacher, because I actually selected that filter on a response of mine. So let me pull that back up. I was actually filtering it from this email. I want to filter it from the original email from Debbie. So I'll click on that. Filter messages like these. Where'd it go? Oh, see, well this is a perfect example. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm throwing this out here. Not all of them have that option. The reason is because it doesn't actually always, it doesn't always require. No, 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 I'm sorry. It's because it's already in the from up here at the top. So let me delete that, go back to my inbox. Apologize for that. Pick that again, pull that down, and now I'm gonna click filter messages like this. So make sure you don't already have an active filter or it will not let you do that again. So notice that it added that person's email address right there. So then I can click create filter with this search right here at the bottom. I could also extend, extend the parameters by which I want this filter to be created. So I'll click create this filter, and then at this point I can do whatever I want. I can skip the inbox, which will automatically archive it. I can mark it as read automatically. I can start automatically. I can apply the label. The label. In this case, I'm going to, I'm going to apply the label tech teacher. I can forward it to somebody else for another email address. I can delete it, never, never send it to spam. Always mark it as important, never mark it as important or automatically categorize it as one of the personal social promotion updates, forums, etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take that label and apply it to it automatically. And here's an important feature on this, is you can also apply the filter to the two matching conversations you'll see right here in my search results. Notice that when you do a filter search, it lets you automatically apply that filter at any given time. So I'm gonna create the filter, and notice at the top of my emails now, it did actually put the label tech teacher on it. So now if I go back to my inbox, you'll see that label actually shows up on all the emails that I created a filter on. Now another way to create a filter is just to do a search. Let's say you wanna do a search for Craig at Precision. Let's say it's a user. Whenever I receive an email address from a, a user. Notice it shows all of these emails as, as my search result. I can actually create a filter with all of this ser these search results by clicking more. I'm sorry, yeah, by clicking more and clicking create filter. So you can actually do a custom search and actually create filters based on your custom searches as well. Now there's a lot more you can do with filters, but I don't wanna dedicate the entire time here with messing with filters. Because the next tip, which is tip number five, is spam. Spam does an amazing job, uh, the software does an amazing job of learning what is spam and what isn't spam. So when you actually get spam in here that isn't actually spam, you just open the message and you click not spam. Eventually Google learns what is and what isn't spam. If it is spam, you wanna select it and you wanna delete it. In my case, this is all spam, so I'm just gonna click delete forever. Now, if I receive a new message that is spam and it doesn't go into my spam box, I just open up the mail, and up here at the top, there's a button that says report spam. Over time, Google does learn what is spam and what isn't. However, if you immediately want all these to be reported as spam, remember you can create a filter by clicking more, filter messages like these, and rather than having it go to your inbox, you can have it just send the spam. So you have a lot of options when it comes to doing that. So that's how you manage your spam, basically. 
Now here's one of my favorite features, and this is what I this is tip number six. This is called archiving. Archiving lets you grab emails and basically dump them in a label permanently. What I like to do is let's say I'm done answering Debbie's question here for Tech Teacher. I will click and drag it to the Tech Teacher label and notice that it comes out of my inbox. I strongly recommend you guys start using archiving because it keeps your inbox nice and clean because then you can go through here and make sure that only relevant emails are in your primary inbox. Same for your social. I'll usually go in here and delete most of these rather than archive them because once I'm done talking to somebody, I don't need to keep record of that conversation. Same with promotions. I'll probably delete most of those. For updates, I'll probably drop into a subcategory as well, especially if it's like a credit card statement or something uh, so that's a great way to make sure you're tracking it now archiving I highly recommend you guys doing uh, Matt mail, mail apps such as mailbox uh, do a wonderful job of, of archiving as well now there's another tip that I wanted to throw out here this one was specific to Ron Hans request the patron um, and that is searching and selecting if you want to do a major search click this drop down area arrow up by your search and you can search by any criteria whatsoever you can search from who the email is from, who it was sent to, what the subject matter is, and this is probably the single most powerful part of the uh, Gmail software if you haven't used it. You can literally go through here and narrow down your searches significantly. So let's just do a basic search for everything, and I'm gonna click search mail. Now he was asking me, what can I do to make sure I'm selecting all of my emails? Because in the top right hand corner, you'll notice it says one to 20, of about 119. If you click this checkbox to check box up at the top to select all, it only selects 20 conversations. Notice it says 20 conversations on this page are selected. You have to click this link right next to it called select all conversations and then it'll actually select all 119 and then you can actually perform a function on them such as moving to inbox, throwing them away, archiving them or whatever you might need to do. Remember, you can also apply labels, and you can also go to more and mark as red, mark as important, and all that fun stuff. So that's selecting and searching. Uh, there's many features you can do with searching. It's very flexible, very powerful. You can search certain inboxes or certain criteria. I use it all the time. So make sure you guys look into searching. Now, one thing that's kind of underused on Google+, this is my tip number eight, is contacts. If you click the drop down here on Gmail, you can click contacts. Contacts gives you access to everybody who you are in contact with directly on your Gmail. It actually automatically adds a contact typically to your inbox if you are actually in the process of making contact with them in some way, shape, or form. Going into contacts allows you to go in and actually elaborate on the information from specific contacts. It also allows you to kind of go through and decide who you want to be organized in what way. It also lets you create contact groups. So if I go through here, for example, under my contact, I've got different groups of people on the left-hand side, and I can actually send emails to that group of people. So let me go back to my email then, and I can say compose email, and I can start typing in the group name rather than the actual name of the person, and it'll let me automatically send emails to that entire group of people. So that's one of the great advantages of using contacts. Remember, contacts also synchronize to your Android devices, and it'll also synchronize to all your email. It's a great, great thing to do to make sure you're keeping up with all of your contacts as well. So that brings us into generating emails. Since I've got this open, I'm able to send emails to everybody. What I want to make sure I do is I have signatures because you want to make sure you have a good signature. As you can see, I have my signature right here. But the way I added this was I went to settings and I went to the cog, click the cog, I went to settings. And then on the bottom here, if you scroll down, you'll notice that there is a nice signature option here, and it lets you specify different signatures for different email addresses. One of my favorite features of this software, because if I'm sending an email from this particular email address, I want a different signature than if I'm sending it from my tech teacher email address. So this is nice, because if I'm in the middle of writing an email address, as you can see on the right-hand side here, and I say, no, 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 this is from my work email address, it'll automatically rotate the actual signature at any given time. Now you'll notice something unique here that I'm actually writing an email here. So let's say I'm in the middle of writing something and the phone rings and I'm saying, okay, well I want to write this to my blog writers and I'm in the middle of saying, of writing this email, I'm like, I just wanted, oh no, I have to close the window or I have to walk away from the computer, it rang. You can actually close your emails now at any time on Google+. It's one of the great features of it as well. And it'll automatically add it to this nice draft section on the left-hand side. 
This is a draft, allows you to pull up that draft at any given time and then finish the email and send it out. I write drafts commonly and I use them to basically start writing responses to people and just leave them hanging until I get more information. If you're in sales or anything, it's a great tool to use. So make sure you guys are looking into drafts. Now on top of drafts, you also have calendars and meetings. We're on tip 12 already, believe it or not. Calendars and meetings are essential uh, for organizing yourself as well on Google+. And, and the reason I like calendars and meetings is because you can actually integrate your email invitations into your calendar as well. Now, on the left-hand side, it doesn't really show your calendar. You actually have to go to a separate page called Google Calendar. So I'm going to go to google.com slash calendar. And this calendar does integrate with your Gmail, which is one of the great parts about it. So I can actually go to my calendar and I can create new calendar events, my event or new schedule, and I can add guests and I can start typing in Look at that, blog writers. I can invite all of those guests from my contacts directly to an event that might be occurring, whether that just be a get together, a hangout, or it might just be some kind of an appointment we have. So uh, make sure you guys check out the calendar too, because it's a great way to kind of organize and, and seamless, seamlessly use everything together that kind of is encompassed by the Gmail service. Um, and calendars and meetings are, are really, they're awesome because they also integrate into all of your mobile devices. So if you set reminders and things like that, they will pop up on your phone as well. And speaking of integration, I have one last thing to cover. It's tip number 13, and it's Google Plus integration of Circles, Photos, and Drive. If I go back to my emails and I go back to my draft, and I'm writing my draft, down here at the bottom, probably one of my favorite parts, let me uh, actually, before I show you, let me know, show you guys, you can actually break out this Compose Mail right here at the top by clicking these arrows. Brings it into full screen. And at the bottom, you have these crazy options down here. You know how you see Attach Files? You also have in Insert Files Using Drive. Drive is Google Drive online storage or cloud storage for your server. So if you have Google Drive already, you can send very, very large files up to gigabytes in size through email because all Google Drive does is actually send them a link to the download. It eliminates that issue of email with normal email services where you can't send files of certain size. If a file is larger than five megabytes, you're going to want to send it using Google Drive. Google Drive will let you send those large files very, very simply and very easily. So I strongly recommend you guys look into this because right now you just upload the file, select it from your computer, select the file, and then you can just click insert in the video, enter it into post, and it'll actually let you send it directly with your mail. Uh, they also have some other great features integrated in here, such as your insert photo. Insert photo does tie into your Google Plus. It also ties into all the photos you're taking on your Android device. And so any photos you take with your phone will show up right here now, as long as your auto backup is set up on your Android device. It's another great feature of Google Plus and Gmail because it allows you to come in here and basically seamlessly integrate all the photos that you're taking directly into your send mail function. And finally, I have a, an option in here where you can insert circles. And circles are really kind of an interesting way to deal with um, being able to actually contact anybody who's in your circles already. And that's really more on the left-hand side here. If I click this drop down right next to circles, you can actually send emails to circles. Or you can select specific circles and see what kind of activity is going on with them. And you can reply to those activities right here in line in your email. So if you're big on Google Plus like I am, I'll do a lot of my actual engagement on Google Plus right from my email. So I'll go to social, and anytime I get a ping here or a notification, I can actually pull that up, and I can respond to my Google Plus notifications right inside my email address. Whew. And that's it, guys. That's it for this video. Remember, if you want to support this show, become a patron for as little as $2 a month. You'll help me make additional content just like this for my patrons who get exclusive access to me at any given time. They can send me email addresses, ask me questions, send me emails, ask me questions, and all kinds of fun stuff. So I hope this answers your question. And this has been 13 amazing Gmail organizational tips. So make sure you subscribe, like, and share. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day.